Hello everyone. Welcome to the video on sulfonamides and sulfones. In this video, I will explain medicinal chemistry 3, third year medicinal chemistry unit 4 of sulfonamides and sulfone. In this video, I will explain the history, chemistry, classification, structure activity relationship, nomenclature and some of the important drug synthesis of sulfonamides and sulfone. This is my YouTube video channel. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. Now, see, the basic use of sulfonamides are they act as anti-metabolites. Anti-metabolites means they interfere with the metabolism of folic acid. Folate or folic acid is responsible for the synthesis of a nucleic acid like DNA and RNA. So when this folic acid is not sufficiently synthesized, it results in lack of nucleic acid and that decreases DNA and RNA synthesis and that results in reduced cell division and function. Now sulfonamides and sulfones, they interfere with synthesis of this folic acid by inhibiting this enzyme dihydroteroid synthase. The reason is they are structurally similar to para-aminobenzoic acid which is one of the intermediate in the biosynthesis of folic acid. You can see the structure, this is what is para amino benzoic acid. Now sulfonamides they also has got a similar kind of structure. A para position amino group is there but instead of acid carboxylic acid they contain sulfonamide group. Because of this similarities it, it interfere with this enzyme, binds with enzyme and inhibit the function of that enzyme. Now when you see the history and uh, 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 history of the sulfonamides it is discovered by Domag, a German biochemist in 1932, he tested a dye called prontosil. So prontosil do not have antibacterial property, but a slight change in its chemical structure resulted in antibacterial activity against streptococci in mice. Derivatives based on this prontosil sulfonamide group were developed resulting in sulfur drugs. So prontosil is a prototype drug through which with the structural activity changes, sulfur drugs emerged into the market. Now, sulfur drugs revolutionized the medicine and saved many thousands of life. Now, let us understand about structure activity relationship. See, all sulfonamides has got this structure. The only uh, difference is there is a substitution at this amino group. Now, the chemical modification of this part of the molecule increases activity and modifies pharmacological property. Mostly, the R group is an electron withdrawing heterocyclic ring. Now remaining part, this part of the molecule cannot be modified chemically without loss of antibacterial activity. So this becomes a kind of pharmacophore. The group, functional groups which are responsible for mechanism of action. You cannot change this but you can change this R group and get a better activity drugs. Now the important drugs are sulfanilamide, sulfadiazine, sulfamethoxazole, sulfisoxazole, sulfestimate. You can see all of them are derivative of this paramanobenzoic acid. Only in place of acid you have sulfonamide group is there. Now, in the syllabus sulfestimate synthesis is given. Now, this is sulfacetamide. Now, you can see the IUPAC name 4 amino phenyl. See at fourth position amine group is there, this is phenyl ring. Sulfonyl acetamide, this is sulfonyl, this is acetamide. So, the synthesis begins with taking these two parts, acetamide and 4 amino benzene sulfonyl chloride. So, it relieves a hydrochloric acid and forms sulfacetamide. See, when you understand the structure of the sulfacetamide, the synthesis will become very easy. So, always learn the structure and think about retrosynthesis. By taking these two parts, you can synthesize the drug. Moving further, the another drug is sulfamethoxazole synthesis. Now, sulfamethoxazole, see this is what is this? Now, 4 amino, again at 4th place amino group is there. Now, methyl isoxazole. So, this is what is methyl isoxazole. See, the numeric starts from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 5th position, a methyl group is there and it is methyl isoxazole. And at 3rd position, it links with sulfon sulfonyl, uh, sulfonylamide group. So, it is called as 3 il And the remaining thing, benzene sulfonamide. So, this one is benzene sulfonamide. Now, again, how can you synthesize this? The attachment is at this group. So here, you need to take these two parts. So 3 amino 5 methyl isoxazole is this group. Uh, give me a second. Let me give you clarity. Yeah. Look at this. 
So these two parts should be taken. See, three amino five methyl isoxazole is this one. Now remaining thing is benzene uh, sulfanilamide, but acetylation of amine group is there to protect this group. Otherwise, the reaction, the sulfonyl chloride may react with the same amine group. So to protect that, and a protecting group is attached, and it resulting it results in the formation of this condensed sulfa methoxazole. Simple one. Now. After sulfonamides, you have a combination of sulfonamide recorders as cotrimoxazole. It is a combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole, sulfonamide. So, co means combination, tri means trimethoprim, the other combination sulfamethoxazole. Now, this combination is known as a sequential combination. It is mainly used for its synergistic action. It blocks folate synthesis at two key steps. At this step, as well as after forming this uh, dihydrofolic acid, it is activated in the form of tetrahydrofolic acid. And here, there is an enzyme called dihydrofolate reductase. This enzyme is inhibited by trimethoprim. Whereas the initial biosynthesis, dihydroteroyl synthase, is inhibited by sulfonamides. So, uh, two key enzymes are inhibited by this combination and this acts synergistically. So, cotrimoxazole is very useful combination. Now, in the cotrimoxazole, we have used trimethoprim. Now, the structure of trimethoprim is this one. Now, look at this. What do you have this substitution? A 3, 4, 5 trimethoxy benzyl. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 positions trimethoxy benzyl group is there. And this ring is pyrimidine. To that pyramidin, at second and fourth position, you have two amino groups are there. So this is what is there. So five, three, four, five trimethoxy benzyl pyrimidine, two, four diamine is the IUPAC name. Now synthesis of trimethoprim a little bit complicated one, but let us understand them. See again, look at this. You have this group is there. So synthesis starts with this one. Three, four, five trimethoxy benzyl head combines with three ethoxy propionitrile in presence of ethanol. So, the group attaches here and it becomes like this. Now, the adjacent group has got a nitrile group or cyano group and a double bond. It is reduced. The reduction result in converting this double bond to single bond as well as changing this nitrile to a mine. Now, once it is synthesized, it is condensed with guanidine that results in trimethoprim. Trimethoprim. Now understand this one. It all starts with this derivative, 3, 4, 5 trimethoxy benzaldehyde derivative combining with 3 ethoxy propionitrile. And again reducing it to get this and condensing with guanidine. That results in trimethoprim. Take the screenshot so that you will understand the synthesis properly. Now the last one is dapsone. Dapsone is anti-leprotic drug. So, dapsone is very widely used to treat anti-leprotic drug. Mechanism of action is very similar like sulfonamides. It interferes with biosynthesis of folic acid. Now, when you see the dapsone, the IUPAC name is 4 amino benzene. This is 4, see 1, 2, 3, at 4th position amine group is there. So, 4 amino benzene is there. Sulfonyl, 4 sulfonyl aniline. See, again at 4th position, this 4th position sulfonyl group is there. And this is aniline. So, this is 4 amino benzene. This is sulfonyl this is sulfonyl group and this is aniline. Let me get this clearly. See, this is one part, 4 amino benzene. This is sulfonyl. This one is aniline. So, this is what is dapsone, uh, IUPAC name. Now, in this structure, see, dapsone is synthesized by using bis paranitrophenyl sulfide. See, two nitrophenyls are there, hence it is called as bis, and this is sulfide. Oxidized in presence of chromic acid results in a sulfone derivative, base paranitrophenyl sulfone derivative. And this, when it is reduced, you get dapsone. This is the simplest, simplest uh, synthesis. So, this is about uh, uh, unit 4 sulfone, sulfone amides and sulfones uh, uh, video lecture. If you like the video, do subscribe and share. Thank you for watching this video.